you just bought a piece of land and you're not sure what equipment you need to help maintain that land, if it's part of a homestead or you just bought land for the first time, I can help you with that. Hi, Chad here from Purple Collar Life, and today's video is kind of about if I could do it all over again or if you're just getting started. And basically what I'm talking about is, let's say you've just bought a piece of land, you're trying to decide what equipment you need, obviously you're on a limited budget, you probably uh, spent the money that you mostly had on the house or on the land, and now you're trying to figure out what pieces of equipment you should get in order to help maintain that property or to establish that property and build your house or whatever else you're doing on the property. This is primarily focused for someone who's maybe purchased between five and a hundred acres and it's a mix of grass so you're gonna have some mowing time, it's a mix of woods, it's a mix of land that you're gonna maintain and just kind of my thoughts on uh, how I did it before, what I'd change and do differently and if I could only afford to get one thing or two things what those would be and in what order. We'll start with these two things first. This one's probably the easiest. While this one is great for riding around the property, it's a lot of fun. Uh, certainly not something that I would have bought right up front. Has very little utilitary purpose. Now if you're checking a fence line or going to check on pastures or something like that, yes, this is absolutely a good tool to do that. But you can't haul any hay, you can't haul any tools. So the XT250, absolutely a great machine to have and fun to ride, but low on the recommendation list for if you just bought property and you're trying to get the right equipment to keep that property maintained or to build onto that property. Next we'll talk about the golf cart. And this was actually my grandfather's golf cart, which is one of the reasons I wanted it. I wanted to make sure that I kept something that was his, something that we could use. And when he had it, uh, he rode it up and down the driveway to get the mail, used it in the lawn to do a lot of different things but it did not have the rear seat on it. Now this one is a Mad Jax, and I'll show you a little closer look at that. Now like I said, this is a club car. This is a 1980 or an 81, I believe, and it does have the Mad Jax back seat, the flip seat, so uh, when we added this on, we not only added seating for two more people, which Mackenzie loves to drive around and haul people on the golf cart, but we also added some hauling capacity. Now I've used this surprisingly to haul firewood out of the woods, uh, anywhere that the golf cart can get to, I can load this up with whatever I need to haul and easily haul it. Now you'll see there are no sides, so it takes some creative stacking to stack the firewood in here, but I've also hauled boxes and all kinds of stuff from one building to another or uh, just, just traveling around to get things from place A to place B. Now I had the golf cart long before I had the Polaris Ranger. So this was my version of a side-by-side -side for several years, and it works great. And if you're thinking about a budget, it's not an expensive piece of equipment. You know, side-by-sides, even used, are really expensive. Golf carts, you can pick up a used one pretty inexpensively. It's about $500 to add the Mad Jack's rear seat and cargo area. So not a large investment and a large payoff on something like this. We'll keep working down the line here. Next is the Polaris Ranger. And this is a 2011 500 EFI crew cab. Um, we haven't had this that long, just over a year now, or just about a year now. And it works great for what we use it for. Now, we don't have horses or anything at this time. Like I said, the, the homestead did have ponies and horses at different times throughout. And this would have been great back then, easy to haul hay. Uh, we've used it to haul some dirt, to haul some mulch. I've used it a lot to haul firewood. And it is a great tool, but bang for the buck isn't quite as impressive as some of these other tools as we go down the line. Again, it's a nice thing to have. I thought we'd use the crew version more than we do. Probably could just use the, the two seat or the three seat version because we don't haul crew in it that often. 
mostly we use it for hauling stuff in the bed or towing something. So again, there is good use for this on property. This would not be the first thing I'd buy though because the price is so expensive, even on a used one. You know, a used one of these you're gonna spend somewhere between seven and $12,000 probably. A new one you're gonna spend crazy money. Um, so unless you just have money to donate towards a fun tool like this, uh, this would not be high on my list on initial purchases on property if I'm thinking on a budget. All right, now the foreman, this is a good one. Again, if you've got fields, pasture land you're going to check on, this is a much better buy in my opinion and was one of the first purchases here on my land because you can do a lot with it. You can haul on the front and the back rack if you're hauling hay or you know, you're haul, hauling tools that can be strapped on. You can hunt and use this for dragging out your deer or anything else you need to haul back into the woods to a hunting stand. It's narrow enough to get through the woods a lot easier than the ranger and uh, the price is a lot better used than something like the side-by-side. -side. So this is one of the first things I had. It was the only thing I had to get to and from the woods uh, for a while because like I said, we have a lot of cricks and this could cross through the cricks or over some easily made bridges. And uh, Honda Foreman, this is a 2001 version, 450. Not that expensive right now used. You can probably pick one of these up under a couple thousand dollars. And as long as it's, in, as it's been taken care of and in good shape, um, like ours has been, this would be a great tool for you. But still not the first thing I would buy. This would be second or third in my mind of things I would buy if I had a piece of land that I was trying to maintain on a budget. Now let's talk about the Time Cutter by Toro. This has been my favorite thing all summer because it has totally changed the way I use all the equipment. It used to be that I had to constantly choose what equipment to use for different tasks because of mowing in the summertime. So you can see I've still got the deck on the John Deere. I've actually not used that deck since we got the Time Cutter. So um, this is some money up front if you're buying a new one. I've not looked into the used zero turn market but really a great thing to have. If you can afford two things, I would recommend this be your second thing. Focus just on mowing, and then you don't need to worry about mowing with a tractor or some other device. So again, maybe the second thing I'd buy on property, assuming that the first thing is a tractor, and let's talk about that. Now I've said before, when I started, have, when I started with this property, it was just a small abandoned field some apple trees and the area that we're in now was woods in fact where the house is back was all woods and that took a lot of clearing and all i had at the time was the cub cadet 149 hydrostatic tractor and i really used that thing it was a 1970s tractor and i pretty much wore the hydrostatic right out of it the linkage i had the rototiller i was using it to move ground i was using it to rototill i was using it to plant areas and I was using it to mow a lot of things that weren't yard. Obviously this, this when you first have an old abandoned field and you start to convert it into property that's gonna be a home, it's a lot of things that really shouldn't be mowed with the mower, but that's all I had at the time and that's what I used. It didn't take me long before I started shopping and I spent $2,500 on a used, obviously Ford 2N tractor. So this is not that tractor, but this is the 8N that we've talked about in some previous videos. The thing I loved about the 2N was it enabled me to use some of the implements that dad already had and it enabled me to get a couple implements that would help me make preparing the property a lot easier for a house. So for several years before the house was even built here with that 2N, I used the brush hog, I got a finished mower and I started mowing what was fueled into a lawn and it started to turn more and more into a yard. The more you mow something like that, the better the grass gets. So the back blade and the finish mower were the first two things I bought for the 2N and I used that thing all the time. A great first thing and I would still recommend that to this day. If I just bought a piece of land, needed something to help me maintain it, I would look for a used tractor that would allow me to do that. Like I said, I bought my used 2N for $2,500. I had to put some money into it. It needed new tires, so you know, there's another $500. Um, but in the implements, I, I bought the finish mower, I bought the back blade. But again, those things have a long-term payoff because you can use them in the winter to plow snow, you can use them to move dirt, you can use the mower for a lot of mowing. I think if I had to do it again, I'd probably do the same thing. 
I would have bought that a little sooner if I could have afforded it and stopped using the 149 Cub Cadet. So I uh, still my feeling to this day is an older tractor that will do what you need it to do if you've got you know a $3,000 to $5,000 budget to get some implements in the tractor, that's my first suggestion. Having said that, if you've got a little bit more room in your budget, if you can stretch that you know, three to five thousand dollars into five to ten thousand dollars, I would definitely look for a used piece of equipment that has a front end loader, still has a three point hitch. Now I can't use all the same implements on this that I can on the Ford tractor. The Ford, even though the horsepower is the same as this John Deere, the Ford's a heavier tractor and holds those, you know, like the, the finish mower a lot better than this 210 does. But the front end loader is a huge difference maker. If I would have had this when I first bought the property, I wouldn't have spent so much time with the back blade, which is really hard to move dirt, really hard to take a, a pile of dirt and convert it into yard, which is what I did a lot of with that back blade. So something with the front end loader, this size is okay. Um, this size has done me well really up until now, and I wish now that I had a little bit bigger. I'm looking for something a little bit bigger, something either you know 25 to 35 or 40 horsepower but not so much the horsepower increase as the size increase. I need a little bit heavier, a little bit stronger front end loader. But if you're just getting started and your budget allows for, you know, eight to $10,000, I'd be looking for something used like this, something that's been well taken care of, dependable. So let's sum up. If you've got something like eight to $10,000 and that's your total budget for a piece of equipment to help you maintain your land, I'd look for something like this John Deere 2210 with the front end loader, mid mount mower, you can do everything with this. It's got the category one three-point hitch, so you can either, as you have more money, pick up some three-point implements for it or buy a couple things right with it, and uh, this will do a great job for you. If you've got a little bit less money, look for an older farm tractor with the category one three-point hitch. Save up money to buy the, the five-foot finish mower, a back blade, and use that for a lot of your getting your property ready to live on or maintaining your homestead. If you've got a little bit more money or you want to do a mix of things, you can buy a farm tractor and a zero turn. Then all you're doing with the zero turn is mowing. You don't have to worry about a finished mower for the farm tractor. Use it for everything you need to use it for. Um, again, if you can find one of these that has a mid mount or without a mid mount, but have a zero turn also, it's nice to not have to use this for mowing and leave the bucket on it all the time. I use the bucket way more often now because I'm not worried about taking it on and off. It's a pain to mow with this on. It interferes with what you can see as you're trying to steer around obstacles. And certainly when we're mowing the cemetery, the bucket is a huge hassle because it's up in the air most of the time so I don't hit it on any of the stones. And it really impedes the ability to navigate well. And what you'll find is that over time you'll add more things to your property maintenance as you have more money and as your career changes and as you uh, learn what things work best for you. Obviously, I didn't have all these things when I first got started and the tractor's dads. So, you know, you start out with what you can, you use what you have, and then you plan your budget, you work hard to save money, and you get the things that help you make life a lot easier as you maintain your property. Um, that'd be my advice to you if you're looking at land like this land with some mowing responsibility, plus maintaining the land, brush hogging, preparing the land for a house, or preparing the land for a barn, or preparing to have animals on the land. Uh, those, those are just my, my thoughts on what I would do the same and differently with the land that's about five acres to a hundred acres. If you have more than that, you're probably going to need a bigger tractor and kind of upsize everything that you've seen here and upsize your budget. If you like videos like this, click that like button, subscribe, share, and comment, and we'll see you the next time.